For the Adams family, home is more than this house itself. It's the neighborhood they're a part of. I walked by that home when I was a young girl and I loved that home and I have I have made it my home. But she and her husband say gentrification has pushed most of their family out. In 2020, they decided to build dwelling units on their property, pictured in this video released by their law firm. But they say they learned that under Seattle's mandatory housing affordability ordinance, they'd either have to rent out extra units as affordable housing, which they say they don't have room to do, or pay under MHA rules. We were happy about the zoning change. Uh, until we found out we had to pay $77,000. The Institute for Justice, a nonprofit law firm that says it represents people when the government violates constitutional rights, claims this is a wrong and argues the city ordinance should be struck down. A 2021 report by the Seattle Office of Housing says so far, the ordinance has brought in millions of dollars to help fund affordable housing and rentals set aside have included seven units in the Kieran Apartments in Uptown and three at the Portal Apartments in Fremont. The city can't treat permittees like this, even if they are using the money for a good purpose. At the end of the day, I should not have to reach down in my pocket and work some more jobs to be able to afford just to build in a property that I already purchased. Um, I still work two jobs now. I don't want to have to get a third. <laughs> um, but it's super important, again, building generational wealth and having that opportunity. The city attorney's office says that it does not comment on pending litigation, but it did receive this lawsuit and it's reviewing the allegations. The office also says that it has received two prior challenges to the constitutionality of the MHA, but that neither was found to have merit. Live in Seattle, Eric Zucco, King 5 News.